We are going to cover 10.1 and 10.2 today on areas of all different types of figures. We've got a lot of formulas and it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers where they need to go to use these formulas. So we're going to start off in 10.1 with areas of parallelograms and triangles. And so these are some basic formulas you've probably seen before. You have area of a rectangle, which is just your base times your height, and then the area of a parallelogram, also base times height, but the height always has to be a perpendicular height here. It's not this leg over here on this side of the parallelogram. And then a triangle is one half base times height. Again, height is always your perpendicular distance. All right, so looking at this problem, the first one is a parallelogram. So the formula I'm gonna use for that is base times height. The base on this one is 20 centimeters. The height is the perpendicular height. The 15 is an extra piece of information thrown in there to catch you, see if you know what you're doing. It's the perpendicular height, it has to be the 12. So I'm gonna say the area would be 240. When you measure area, you always do units squared, so this would be centimeters squared. And that's my answer. All right, see if you can do this next one here. Does this make sense on where the height of this would be? Because it's kind of weird. Ultimately, what's going on, it's kind of the same picture as the first one, but it's turned sideways. And so you have to look at this as your height coming in here perpendicular, and it's perpendicular to which side? Well, it's perpendicular to this side. So this is actually going to be my base, the 4.7, and then this is going to be my height. So area equals, again, base times height. I write that every time just to make it stick in your brain a little bit. The base is actually going to be the 4.7, and the height is the 5.7. Now when you're doing this today, this homework today, you're going to have to pay attention to what you're supposed to be rounding to. Um, I'm going to go ahead and round this one to the hundredths because it came out nice, but pay attention. They may want it rounded to the tenths, but I'm going to go ahead and go 26.79, and that would be inches squared. Okay, let's move on to triangles. Triangles are one-half base times height. You can see here I've given you all kinds of information on this triangle. The height is always that perpendicular, so that's going to be the 4, and it's perpendicular to this side here, so that's your base, and that's a total of 7 units. You have to add that 4 and 3 together. So then I'm left with 1 half, the base is 7, the height is 4. When I multiply that all together, I get 14 square meters. Now they kind of have to give you that height, that, that perpendicular dropped in there. But if you look at this next one, they don't have that extra line drawn in there like this. They didn't do that. Well, they didn't really need to because they already have a perpendicular set here. This, you could look at this as the height that's dropped perpendicular to this side here. So that would be the base. This is a right triangle. Now it's turned sideways there. It's maybe easier to see it if they had drawn it like this, where here is your base and here is your height. But they can rotate it. It's fine. It's still the same triangle. One half base times height. So if I'm going to say the 6 yards is the height, it was drawn perpendicular to the 4.5. So the 4.5 is my base. And then my height is 6. All right, and again, type that in your calculator, and you get 13.5, and this would be yards squared. Now, I am going to do a couple tricky ones in here, and I don't know that they're tricky, but it's just something you got to think a little bit about. This next picture, what you have to envision here is this is a rectangle, or actually it's a square, that's attached to a triangle. And so I'm gonna find the area of the square, add to it the area of the triangle, and I'll have my total area. Now in the square, it looks like it's just an eight by eight square. So that would just be, and you're using that base times height formula still, it just happens that your base and your height happen to be the same. So the area of the square is gonna be 64. 
Okay, now let's do the area of the triangle. It's one half the base times the height. One half. Now, again, you can see there's a right angle here. So this is going to be the height, and it's dropped perpendicular to this side here. So this is going to be the base. Here's the height. The height I know is 8. Could you figure out how long this base is right here? Okay, it should be 6, because the whole thing is 14. If this much is 8, that leaves me 6 there. So my base is going to be 6, and my height is going to be 8. All right, that ends up with a 24. And then if you add those two together, your grand total is going to be 88 square centimeters. All right, next one. Weird shaped thing here we got going. They've dropped the height here, but then they didn't tell us what it was. So I'm not sure that that's really very helpful. Um, I don't know, what else could we do to figure this out? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Look at the directions. It says find the height. Oh, okay. All right, so they want us to find that actual height. Hmm, how are we gonna do that, do you suppose? Well, it's a parallelogram. All right, and I can work on finding the area of this because they give us kind of the height in a different way. So it all depends on how it's oriented. They're dropping a perpendicular right here saying the height is 0.3. Now, if that's the height, that's great, but what would your base be on that then? Okay, the base is the 0.4. It's still, it's dropping straight down, so it would be perpendicular to this side. But don't try to include the whole thing. You don't want that. Only the yellow part. So I'm going to go area equals, this is a parallelogram, so it's base times height. Okay, so that area is going to be a 0.12. And then I'm going to start over. I'm going to do this again, turning this the other direction. And I'm going to be looking at this as my height, and that's perpendicular to the 0.5. So just a different way to look at it but it's still the same parallelogram. So when I go um, the base times the height, it's a 0.5 times the height. I don't know the height, but don't I know the area already? Can't I just plug that in right there? So the area is 0.12, the base is 0.5, what would your height be? And you're just gonna divide by 0.5 on both sides, and you'll have your height. So 0.12, divided by one half is going to get me 0.24 and that is, I guess I don't have any units on this one but notice this is the height so you would not put square units on that, that's just the height not an area. Alright, let's move on to some other shapes. All right, we're going to look at trapezoids, rhombuses, and kites. They each have their own formula. The trapezoid formula is a little bit messy. You can see here it's um, one half the height, again, height has to be the perpendicular height, of the two bases added together because you have a top base and you'll have a bottom base. And so this height is always dropped perpendicular to one of those bases. All right, so we'll work through that. Um, a rhombus and a kite actually have the same formula, if you look at that. It's one half the product of your diagonals. So your diagonals right, are right here. If I multiply those together and then take half of it, that'll get me the area. And same thing in this kite. Now notice that these diagonals are perpendicular. That's going to be important to us later on because that creates some right triangles in there that we're going to need to know. All right, let's try this. Okay, so in this first one, now we kind of have to trust the picture on this because they didn't do a very good job of marking the sides. And um, in this first example, we're going to assume this is a rhombus. And I'm going to use my rhombus formula. The area is equal to 1 half D1 times D2. So one half, now be careful here, the 30 feet is only this, so the diagonal is actually 60. And the other diagonal would actually be 40. All right, so I'm doing a lot of this in my head. It'd be good if you kind of practice doing that in your head also, because I'm just doing 
Um, half of 60 is 30, and 30 times 40 is 1,200. All right, we have units there. That's going to be feet squared. All right, let's see if you can do this next one. It's a kite. Run it through your area formula. Go ahead and pause the video and work through that one, and then come back when you're done. All right, I ended up with a 21 meter squared. Um, check through your work, make sure you agree, and then let's keep moving. Um, next one is a trapezoid. This is a little messier formula. This is the one half the height times the sum of the bases. Let's see if they've given us everything. We're gonna put in our one half. The height is that perpendicular height, so that's 18. And then I'm going to have to add my bases. They gave me both of those, 15 plus 27. Now you have to do your order of operations here. I'm going to go ahead and do the 15 plus 27. So I'm going to have 1 half times 18. You maybe multiplied that together, all right? That's all right. And 15 plus 27 is 42. And then I'll go to my calculator and type that all in. So I got a 0 0.5 times 18 times 42, and I have 378 inches squared for that one. And so you're just gonna have to kinda get familiar with those formulas and just start plugging numbers in where they go. All right, now we're gonna do some trickier ones. Okay, this is a trapezoid. You can see that um, the you have a pair of parallel sides right here, and you can see they've given you the height but for the area of the trapezoid, you have to know that height and you have to know both bases. And you can see here that I only know the top base. I don't really know this right here. Now, I imagine right here this is a rectangle, so I know this much of it would be 6. But what's this piece over here? Okay. There will be times, because you're dropping that altitude and that's always perpendicular, there will be times you create right triangles. And you're going to have to use the Pythagorean theorem. To find missing parts. So that's a strategy you can use. Use Pythagorean theorem. So what I'm going to do is in this little triangle here, I know the one of the legs and I know the hypotenuse. I'm looking for the other leg. Let's go ahead and just call that little a. All right, so I'm going to do a squared plus 8 squared equals 10 squared. Remember, it always equals your hypotenuse. So I'm going to have a 64 and a 100. 100 minus the 64 gets me a 36. That works out nice. So A is 6 units long. Okay, so now I know that this would be 6 right here. And from the, um, from the look of the, the little rectangle, this is also 6. Now that's a coincidence. That wouldn't necessarily always be the case that they end up being the same thing. But it looks like then my bottom base, the whole thing, would have to be 12. All right, so let's use our trapezoid formula. Area equals 1 half the height times the two bases added together. So I'm going to have 1 half times 8 times 18. And that would be 72 and where are units here are uh, meters, so that'll be meters, meters squared. Okay, let's take a peek at the next one. Still gonna get stuck using Pythagorean theorem here. And what you kinda have to see, this has a rhombus, and in the rhombus formula, you need to know the diagonals. And they were nice enough, nice enough to give us one of the diagonals, it's six, but they didn't give us this other diagonal. And I'm gonna have to go find that before I can use my area formula. Now, the entire, you can, I forewarned you earlier that this is going to create right triangles. And so you have yourself this right triangle and you know the hypotenuse. And I'm looking at this one right here. You know the hypotenuse is five. Now the entire vertical diagonal was six. So this much of it is three. I could go find this piece right here. And then I'd know, I could figure out what that diagonal measurement is. So I'm going to do a Pythagorean theorem. Again, I already know the hypotenuse, so I'm going to go a squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared. And 
then subtract the 9. And we got lucky again. Do you remember what that's called when it comes out as a nice whole number? That is a Pythagorean triple. So we have a 3, 4, 5 is called a Pythagorean triple, a triangle that has a side 3, a side 4, and a hypotenuse of 5. All right, so now let's go back and let's do our area formula. This is 1 half, diagonal 1 times diagonal 2. The first diagonal they gave me was a 6, so I'll go ahead and use that. And my new diagonal, now I did, I found out that A was 4, but remember A is only half of that diagonal. I want the whole diagonal, so I'd put 8 in there for my second diagonal. All right, and when I multiply that all out, I end up at a 24 meters squared for my area. Okay, here's some more that we're going to have to use one of our strategies from earlier to be able to figure this out. And on this one, you can see some of these angles I'm giving you now. That's kind of different. I'm giving you an angle measurement. But look at those special angles I'm giving you. We should be using our special right triangles here. So that's another strategy to find some missing parts, special right triangles. Okay. So let's look at this first one. We've got ourselves a trapezoid. You need one half the height, okay, the height, well, they don't really have it drawn in there, but like right, I mean, they, the side over here is perpendicular, but they didn't give me that measurement. So I'm gonna draw the height right here because you can see that, that when I drop that height, it's gonna make it a right triangle. And this angle over here is 60, so I've got myself a nice 30, 60, 90 triangle. In this 30, 60, 90 triangle, I can figure out that since this top leg is 5 and down here the whole thing is 7, when I kind of created this rectangle, that chopped that 7 up into two parts. This is still 5, but this little piece over here is going to be 2 units then. So I've got a short leg that's 2. All right, so if this is 2, the short leg is 2, then the long leg is 2 root 3, which is the height that I want. Okay, I don't really even need the hypotenuse over there. I'm just trying to use my area formula. So area equals 1 half the height, which is 2 root 3, times the sum of the bases. So I'm a 5 plus, and I'm back to the full base here of the trapezoid, so I want the 7. When I clean that up, it's 1 half times 2 root 3, times 12. Now, let's talk a little bit about this. When you're multiplying these together, you're just multiplying um, three numbers together. And the order that you multiply does not matter. So there's a couple things you could do here to do this in your head, because I'm going to want an exact answer. I could take half of 2 root 3, and that would just get me a 1 root 3, and then take it times 12. So that would be 12 root 3. Or if you want, if you like this better, you could take half of 12. That'd be a 6. And then 6 times 2 root 3, still 12 root 3. So however you multiply that, you're going to end up at a 12 root 3. Again, you're going to have to pay attention to the directions on your homework on how they want you to round it. Sometimes they're going to want that exact, especially if you're doing special right triangle stuff. Other times they're going to want you to round that. So I'm going to leave it at 12 root 3 but I'm also going to type it in as a 12 times the square root of 3 and see what I get. All right, so as a decimal, I have a 20 point, let's say, 8 if I round it to the tenths place. So either one of those are potential ways to answer that. Okay, let's try another one. Again, it's a trapezoid, but it's turned sideways. You can see that the parallel sides are vertical now. These are still your bases, though. So this time I know both of my bases. It's a 0.9 and a 2.1. I've got the bases. What I don't have is the height, so I'm going to drop this perpendicular right here. Creates this nice right triangle in which they've told me this is a 45. So now I know I have myself a 45, 45, 90. All right, in a 45, 45, 90, um, this is, on this particular one, they've given me the hypotenuse. Now I want to go to the short or to the leg. These legs happen to be the same, so I really want to go to this leg. Now, 
to get from the hypotenuse to the leg, you're going smaller, so you have to divide. Do you remember what to divide by to go in the 45, 45, 90? Should be a root two. So I'm gonna take my 1.7, I'm gonna divide by root two in my calculator right now. So 1.7 divided by the root two, and I have a 1.20, so I'm gonna call that just a 1.2. And what I just managed to get there was the height of the trapezoid. So let's go do our formula. One half the height times the sum of the bases, 0 0.9 plus 2.1. Now I like to do some mental math here. Half of a 1.2, think of it as half of 12. Well, you're just going to have a decimal in there. It's going to be a 0.6. And a 0.9 and a 2.1, that comes out great. That comes out to just a 3. And if I multiply those, if I just did a 3 times 6, it'd be an 18, but I've got a decimal place in there. So it's a 1.8, and that would be meters squared. All right. Why don't you try one of these? This next one looks like it's a rhombus. See if you can figure out the area of this rhombus using its formula and special right triangle rules. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a shot. Okay, hopefully you got 73.9. Um, let's go through it real quick, just because this one was a little tricky. They said that this piece right here is eight. Okay, so then I know the full diagonal is 16. I used that down here, that diagonal. I gotta work on finding this diagonal. Creates a nice right triangle here. It's a 30, 60, 90. The long leg here would have to be 8 because it's 8 over there. So I've got the long leg is 8. I have to divide the long leg by root 3 to get to the short leg. I just went with a decimal on this. So now I know that this piece right here is 4.6. I went ahead and doubled the 4.6 to get the full diagonal to use in my formula. So there's my 1 half d1 times d2 and I get 73.9. All right, here's our last type of problem that you might come across. And on this one, if they put it on a coordinate plane, then what you might need, need to be doing is using the distance formula to find any lengths that are missing. Okay, so what I'm gonna have to do is find, this is a kite, so I need the diagonals. right here, let me use colors. Okay, so I have a couple things that I can do here. I'm gonna go ahead and show you this because I think this is so much faster. If you know your special right triangles, they're so much faster than doing distance formula or other or Pythagorean theorem or anything. So I need to know this diagonal right here. Well, if you look, it kind of creates like this right triangle right here. And these two legs, this is a three units and this is three units. So this ends up being one of those 45, 45, 90 triangles. So I know that this hypotenuse here is going to be that 3 root 2. All right, so I know one of the diagonals then is 3 root 2. So if I'm going to do my area formula over here, it's going to be 1 half, and then one of them is going to be 3 root 2. And then i got to find the other diagonal. Now this is a little trickier. I've got to find this one. It doesn't work out as nice. It's not as perfect of a triangle as that last one. So let's practice doing some distance formula. So remember the distance, well, and we're going to need these ordered pairs. This is 0, 0 for point T, and point R out here looks like it is at 5, 5. Okay, so I'm going to do distance equals big square root, x minus x, so 5 minus 0 squared, plus y minus y, 5 minus 0 squared. All right, well this actually came out pretty nice, didn't it? Okay, so that could be 5 squared, so that's 25, plus another 5 squared, that's 25. That becomes the square root of 50, which does actually reduce. That would break down to the square root of 25 and the square root of 2. So that diagonal is 5 root two. That's how long that one is. So I'm going to go plug that in to my formula up right here. 
that diagonal is 5 root 2. Okay, and then I'm going to do my area formula here. Let me finish that up. Area equals 1 half. Now if I'm multiplying these two together, I can multiply like parts. So I've got the 3 times the 5. That'd give me a 15. And looky here, you've got a root 2 times a root 2. That actually comes out nice. Root 2 times root 2 is just 2. Good. So even though we had radicals and what looked like it was going to be ugly, this is going to come out real nice. So I'm going to end up, after I multiply that together, just a simple 15 square units. And they didn't give me units, so I'm not super picky. If you wanted to write units, you just write it like that. Okay, so kind of using some of our previous knowledge on some of these formulas. Um, don't forget some of that old stuff. Good luck.